morning everyone it's Rob here from the homestead um, I wanted to do a quick uh, one week review on the new tundra and some of the things that have stuck out for me um, good and bad um, I guess we got to start with the elephant in the room that front end is like a garage door it's huge I don't know what they were thinking when they came up with that front end, but um, it's a love-hate relationship, I guess. Uh, there's a lot of space up there. You think it would be like a barn door going through the wind, but it doesn't seem to affect it. Um, so at one week, um, I really like the truck. It goes good. I'm surprised on how quick it is and and how well it does everything um, the ride is like no tundra I've ever had before and I had the original 2008 was a good riding truck um, but I was getting out of a ton truck every day at work and then getting into that so it probably made it ride really nice um, and that was just a regular TRD I don't I don't think they had all the packaging like they do now. Um, it uh, it was just a regular cloth interior SR5. Um, and I drove that truck for four years or so, maybe even longer than that. Yeah, it was probably four or five years anyways. And uh, so that was a great truck and that's what sold me on the Tundra, but it was a crew max cab and i wanted something a little nicer i guess and i traded that for a 2013 uh limited and i believe that was a trd also and i think that year they had different models of the trd it was just a regular trd um and that was also a crew max cab and uh, we didn't like it as much as the 2008. It didn't ride as nice. It had, I think it had Bilstein shocks in it, but the leather interior was really hard and only the driver's seat had the power seat so you could adjust it. Um, and Midge, who's only four foot 10, hence the name Midge, uh, she, couldn't even touch the floor in the front so we went around with a patio cushion on the floor in that truck it was kind of a pain because anytime someone else got in you had to take it out and put it somewhere um, so this is better than both of those um, in all different ways um, it rides better it drives better it has just as much power in spite of the V6 in here. It um, it might even have more. I don't know, it's a different kind of power. Anyone that drives a V8 and goes to a V6, even if it's a more powerful V6, there's a difference there that you just can't pinpoint. Um, so uh, the interior on this is really nice. I think I would have preferred the cloth interior, but um, I'm, I'm liking this interior and I'm sure with dogs getting in and out of it, the leather is always better. You can just take the blower and blow it out. Um, now I carpool to work and I'm the driver uh, and there's four guys that ride with me and they're all average size guys, some a little bit taller than others, but um, this uh, cab uh, was not made for that. <laughs> Uh, they seem to be okay with it, um, but it is the center, that center seating position in the back is pretty tight. You got to have your feet on both sides of, you know, what would be the tunnel. It's the center console comes way back. Um, so that's a little bit tight. The, the crew max cab probably would have been better for that, but to get... The crew max with the six and a half foot bed, you would have waited for who knows how long to get 
this package, which is the TRD Off-Road. And that's the one I was looking for and I had to travel quite a ways to get it. Um, which brings me to the other thing that is kind of irritating about Toyota. They have all this packaging. I mean, it's infinite on what you can get in different packages or different levels. You get the SR, SR5, and then Limited, and then Platinum, and then some other thing way up on the top. And then you have different packages on the packages, like the TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road, you know, just, it goes on and on and on, and it's limitless. But you have to find it. You can't order a Toyota. Come on, Toyota, get off get off that wagon. Let us order what we want. Everyone else lets us order what we want. Toyota, you have to search the country to find what you want. You give all these packages, but you can't order what you want. You just got to find it. It's like an Easter egg hunt over the country. So that was kind of irritating. Um, and I think Toyota could do it better. You make them right here in the States. I think they're made in Texas. Why not? Anyways, enough on that. Um, the ride is exceptional. It drives just like a car. That first driving impression that I had last week was spot on. It, um, it really goes good. I have, um, I've had two different trailers hooked to it. I've got a 14-foot uh, uh, Brymar dump trailer, and I had, I got rid of it, but I've had it hooked up to it, a 16-foot uh, uh, landscape trailer, um, and both of them pulled great. As a matter of fact, you didn't, you had to pay attention because you didn't even know they were there. Um, the switchology in it is far better than the RAV. They really figured that out. Um, the RAV has these little tiny buttons that you got to push for like the fan up and down and they're teeny tiny. They're about the size of the end of your finger for crying out loud. And that was one of the things that really irritated me about the RAV4 Limited was those little teeny tiny buttons. And I'm 59 years old this year. I can't freaking see down there to push these little buttons and I'm always struggling you end up having a car accident trying to turn on the blower motor for the defroster for crying out loud on the tundra they have toggles and they're bigger and they're nice and it really works well uh, I like it these are the toggles up and down I don't know how well you can see that because of the sun. Sorry, I've been chasing a puppy. Um, so that's far better than the uh, um, than the RAV. The infotainment center. Um, let me start off with saying if you own a Toyota and your wife drives that one, whether it's a RAV or a Prius or a Camry or a 4Runner, whatever, you've got that account. You've got that Toyota account. Don't. Don't put the Tundra or your other Toyota on that account because it's connected to a phone. When we first programmed this, it was on that account that we have the RAV on, we just added a vehicle thinking, hey, that's the way to do it. It's not the way to do it because it attached itself to Midge's phone for her car. And now every time I get in it with my phone, it says there's no phone. There's no nothing there. Even though I can make phone calls and it can pick up my music on my phone, it's still that initial screen says, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't recognize the phone in, you know, in different words. I don't know exactly what it says because I just push the button and continue on. So this is what it is right here. Profile not loaded. Guest mode 
activated and you have to hit dismiss to get that off of there. So start your own account. Don't use your wife's account or the other vehicle's account. Um, and uh, I'm gonna change that, but every time I get in to change it, Midge isn't with me and it wants her password and it's, it's a show. So if you own more than a couple Toyotas, start its own account. Um, so I'm gonna walk around and uh, a couple of the things that I'm not completely sold on, it's gonna have to get through a winter season and that is the tailgate. And by the way, it is mud season right now in Vermont. It's the end of mud season, um, but it's still mud season. So everything's dirty. There's no avoiding it. You'd, I'd have to wash it right here where it sits and not drive it a foot. Um, so the tailgate, it's a button. So it's an electric thing. And I don't know if I like that or not. We'll get through a few winters and see if it works through the winters. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but it's like a lift hatch on, on a car where you just push the button and it pops open. And the key fob has a thing that you can pop open the tailgate, which I don't know why you'd want that. But um, the other thing in the bed is the tie downs are midway up the bed. There's nothing on the floor. So if you have something low and you want to strap it down, that might be an issue. Um, we'll see, I see they have spots to build up the bed over the top of the wheel wells. Um, so maybe that's the intent there that you just ride around with two by sixes in your truck all the time. I don't know. We'll see. Um, uh oh. Puppies chasing chickens. We got a puppy, by the way. <laughs> and it's a herding puppy. Who wants to herd the chickens, I guess? Pandemonium. Anywho, <laughs> chickens are making a run for it. So the tires that they put on this, they're the, the, the Michelin. Um, and I don't know, I've never been a Michelin fan. They're the LTX. And I put some Michelins on my... Uh, Midge had an avalanche and we put some Michelins on that and it rode terrible and they wore out quickly um, I I didn't really care for them. We'll see how these do um, So like I said, it's mud season and the truck is gonna be muddy. It's the blueprint blue Which is really cool in the sun and I don't know if you can see the little all the different metal flake colors in there um, but it uh, let's see if I can get up close to it but it's really pretty when it's clean and when it's uh, sunny out um, at night it looks black um, but during the day it's really got a pretty and I can see there's like a blue there's a silver there's like a purple in there almost a reddish color in there or magenta um, and I don't know if you can see it but it's a it's a really pretty paint um, I've had dark blue vehicles in the past and they're really hard to keep clean and we live on a dirt road we live way up a little valley on a dirt road we're the last house on this road um, so I don't expect it to look clean really ever. <laughs> and, uh, that's why we always end up with these gray color cars, or we had a goldish color car and you couldn't see any dirt on that. But 
that's just life of living out in the middle of nowhere and uh and uh i'd rather have it that way anyways um so the lights on this thing are amazing they're the brightest lights i've ever had on a vehicle i wouldn't want to be driving towards me <laughs> with the high beams on um the uh the fog lights are okay um they brighten up a big area directly in front of the vehicle but it doesn't go out it doesn't cast out very far like other fog lights i've had um which is probably the way it's supposed to be but um i'd like to see it just go out a little bit further um the uh automatic headlights the high beam low beam when you put that on auto it's on auto and you can't manually low go to low beam and i think there's a setting in there somewhere for it but i can't find it i'll have to get out the manual which is like that thick um and find out how to adjust the settings on that to make it more sensitive because it doesn't low beam at all it just stays on bright and you can't and i just felt bad one night because this poor person coming towards me and i'm trying to figure out how to get the low beams on with the rav if you have that automatic um beam setting on there you can still low beam with the um, regular manually so if it doesn't work you can just click it off with the truck it just stays on and you can't do anything you have to push the button to make it come off um, which you know I I don't think that's a real good idea because man those are some bright lights and you want to be able to shut them down if you want to um so overall over the first week it's been a lot of fun um i'm gonna drive the rav to work this week and midge is gonna drive it for for a week and we'll see what she says about it um you know she doesn't drive she might go one or two places with it all week because she's right around here um so i'm gonna drive the car this week and she'll drive the truck and that'll be the norm probably um for the most part um traveling back and forth to work it's about 22 miles for me and this gets 40 miles to the gallon or better this is going to get 18. i figure once it gets broken in it'll probably get about 20. um so about half as good um and the guys would much rather ride in the car i'm sure because of the legroom thing but um we didn't get this for them we got it for us it does what we want it to do it's got a full-size bed on it well it's got a six and a half foot bed on it it pulls the trailers great um and that's what we really needed now so i'll uh, i'll check in again with you next week and let you know uh what Midge thought of the truck over the week. She hasn't even driven it yet. Our middle grandson who has his permit has driven it. Um, but she hasn't, so I think she's a little jealous. Um, so this week, she'll drive it. We'll get back up with you next week and, uh, and let you know what Midge thought of it. So, uh, hope this is helpful. Like, subscribe, and have a great day.